What about, instead of wheels, we make a vehicle which uses balls, and we make it big enough to ride on? I previously made a smaller ball wheel robot which you can check out in my channel. The inspiration for the wheels came from a project carried out at Osaka University. Each ball is made from two hemispheres which can move freely, and this makes it a bit like an omni wheel which is driven in one axis but not the other. Last time I made three giant versions of these wheels, and in this video I'm going to assemble the chassis of the vehicle and see if I can ride on it. So I've made three of these things with funny angles and cutouts, and each one fits onto the wheel like so. That's probably enough rock music for this video, but we do need to make two more steel parts, which are two triangular frames which are going to fit in the middle of the parts we've made to hold them all apart at 120 degrees. So I cut some angles, which I couldn't do with the miter saw because they're 30 degrees and it doesn't go that sharp, but by the power of Greyskull, we can just bend that in so each one of these is 60 degrees and all three add up to 180. So it didn't fold perfectly, but with a bit of wrangling on the floor and standing on it, we've got two which we can now weld up. So I just welded up the ends there and also welded over some of the ends to try and make that a bit stronger, although it is mild steel, so I think it's going to be perfectly strong enough. So I just spun that round and tried to just weld over the corners so we've got a bit more strength and just fill that gap in with weld. Getting back into practice with TIG welding and every one I do makes the previous ones look a bit rubbish. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is Autodesk Inventor. I design all my projects in CAD before building them, even if some of the parts are made by hand. Autodesk Inventor provides professional grade 3D CAD design, documentation and product simulation tools, and allows you to work efficiently with a powerful blend of parametric, direct, freeform and rules-based design capabilities. Autodesk Inventor is great for mechanical design, like my Omni Ball Wheel project. It's easy to put together mechanical components and make working joints so you can check clearances in the model before you build it in real life, and that's been really useful in this project. Autodesk Inventor is great for producing whole assemblies, it's easy to place the components and add constraints. There are many other features and capabilities, but one of my favourites is the ability to create engineering drawings from your assembly so that you can share the design and have the parts manufactured. You can present the views and cross sections to the drawing you need to show, and add only the dimensions that are required for manufacturing. So check out my special link in the video description of this video to get a free 30 day trial of Autodesk Inventor. There are various big holes and big cutouts in this which I'll explain later in the video, but first of all we need to CNC some parts which are going to be quite structural, so I'm going to do these in aluminium. This is 6mm aluminium plate and I managed to find a piece which was half the price of the aluminium I normally buy, however it turned out to be quite soft which is an issue because aluminium melts quite easily, the machine only goes down to 8000 RPM and I'm using a 6mm diameter two flute cutter. So that meant I had to cut really shallow and I slowed the feed rate right down, 
and then gradually increased it as I cut the pieces. So I'm only cutting quarter of a millimetre depth, I couldn't do any deeper at 8000 RPM without it melting, and then eventually I speeded up the feed rate, so we started with around 10 millimetres a second, and then increased that to 50 or 60. But that's about the best I could get out of the aluminium, unfortunately, which is quite a lot softer and meltier than the aluminium I normally buy. And that leaves us with the motor mounting plate, which is the main chassis for the gearbox that's going to be turning each of the Omni wheels. And as usual, I'm using the Turning G Aero Drive 6374 149kV motors, and I've made three of those to control each of the three wheels. There are quite a lot of 3D printed parts in this project. This is just standard PLA, and those parts are going to be perfectly strong enough for what we need. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. This is the pulley we're going to print and various other parts of the chassis because we've got a belt reduction which in this case is going to be 3 to 1. So that's the big pulley on the wheel and the back of the gearbox that's going to be attached to the aluminium part. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So we've got a belt which goes down to that 3 to 1 pulley and we've got various other plates mounted in parallel so there's two M6 countersunk bolts through two 3D prints onto another piece of aluminium with a gap in the middle. And the plate we printed fits onto the back of that with some more bits of M6 studding and nuts and that holds the other end of the pulley. That's the complete assembly with the motor at the top and the 3 to 1 pulley in the middle so we just need to go and put all of that M6 studding in. So that gives us a 3 to 1 belt reduction gearbox with a T5 pulley and a T5 belt on one side and an HTD on the other side that's going to drive the wheel. So obviously that will be pulled tight on the smaller pulley so we go small to big and small to big. And of course I've made three of those for each of the three wheels as with everything. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project which are large and substantial. There's not only 6 to hold the axles but another 12 in the hemispheres of the wheels. I cut quite a high tolerance recess in the aluminium plate so there's a 3mm recess that those bearings push into nicely. And that bearing and the plate fits over the hole that I cut in the chassis so that bearing sits nicely in the recess there. I need to bolt those plates on so we need some additional holes which are 6mm so we can put some M6 bolts through which will be recessed on the aluminium side. You'll also notice one of those big hole cutting saw holes that I made there and that's so I can get the head of an M8 bolt through and that's so that the whole chassis can be bolted together in the middle. There are two of those, one at the top and one at the bottom and those match the other big hole that I drilled into the triangular plate so that can go over the nuts on the other side and then we can just put a nut on in the middle to go and bolt those on. So there's two of them fitted. What of course we need to do though is put all three of them together to make the chassis so all three legs are 120 degrees apart. We can hold those three wheels in a triangular formation. So that's the whole chassis assembled pretty much. We've got the other bits and pieces to bolt on, but for now that looks pretty good. And even without those aluminium pieces covering the recesses on each stick, that seems more than strong enough. But before we can put those axles and the aluminium bearing mounts on, we need to cut some wooden parts. So we've got pretty much every material used in this build. And these of course are three wooden pulleys, which are going to hold our 3D printed pulley we printed. And one of those goes on each of the axles. So having painted them and glued on the 3D printed pulleys, we've now got three HTT profile big pulleys with a square axle hole, and that fits neatly onto the axle. Now it's a pretty tight fit which requires a wooden mallet to fit it, but of course that'll still slip and everything on there, so I've got some 3D printed clamps that go either side, and those are going to be wood screwed into the wood and then clamped up with an M8 bolt. Now the pulley's fitted, we can put the aluminium bearing plate on with a bearing push fitted into it, and we've got another 3D printed part, which is essentially a stopper which fits neatly onto that square axle and allows the round bearing to run on it. So we can just pull that up and that's a nice fit so that bearing runs on the square axle. Yep, and one on the other end of the axle as well, although there's no pulley on there because we only need one pulley per axle to drive the wheel. 
So you may remember there was a funny gap in the middle of our gearbox assembly and that's so it can slot into a piece of steel on the chassis. And that's the piece of aluminium I already showed fitted which is much easier to put on afterwards. And then that just does up with some nuts and I need to fit those on the other four bits of studding as well. And that allows the whole gearbox to slide up and down, it'll be fixed in position but essentially it means I can tension the belt nicely and we can adjust that and put a stopper and a shim in so we can get the belt tension perfect. So there's one ball shaped wheel with its two hemispheres, one pulley and one motor assembly mounted on one third of the whole chassis. You might be able to spot an M4 bolt which is pushed into that stopper on the end of the axle that stops the bearing pulling off so it's through the metal. And I've also got the clamp done up nice and tight on the axle with those M8 bolts and screwed onto the pulley to hold it square. But of course this is an omnidirectional wheel so the two hemispheres can spin independently of the drive axis and that means it can move in all directions. And we can bolt all three of those to the middle triangular pieces so that we've got our three wheels at 120 degrees apart. The whole thing is easily back drivable owing to the 3 to 1 reduction so obviously I can push this around and check it moves in all directions which it seems to do pretty well as well as being able to rotate on the spot by driving all the wheels in the same direction. And it looks like it's going to be strong enough for me to ride on. Before we can do that though we need to put some electronics in. So we've got an Arduino Uno and an NRF radio chip so I can remote control it. We've also got this time a fuse box with some 35 amp fuses and an emergency stop button. The whole thing is powered off a 6S LiPo, it's a 60C one but that should be more than enough current to power the three VESCs which are meant for skateboards and I've got one of those of course on each of the motors. It's running in duty cycle mode so we should be able to control the speed pretty accurately despite not having any wheel encoders. So it is radio controlled and I'm using the OpenDog 3 radio controller that I use in all the projects communicating with that NRF 24L01 radio chip. It's running pretty well and it moves in all directions and it can rotate in both directions. So basically we've got three axes of control here for moving forwards and backwards, left and right and spinning on the spot. Check out part one to find out why there's a red skateboard wheel in the peak of each of the hemispheres. Of course the hemisphere can't actually run anymore when it's right on the peak but as you can see it hardly ever happens and basically the probability of driving on it's pretty small. But the question you really want answering of course is, can I ride on it? So let's give that a go. And the answer is, yes very much so. In fact it feels terrifyingly high powered due to those 1500 watt motors, all three of them, and the 3 to 1 belt reduction which seems to be holding up nicely. So yes I can move in all directions. I have put some motion filtering on here, although it's still pretty tricky to stay on if you move suddenly. And what I've done here is squared the stick values and scaled them back down to the correct value so we get far more control when you move the stick a little bit but we still get the full speed when you move it a lot. I've also put a first order filter on which causes deceleration but in fact it's still really easy to throw yourself off it. So what I probably need to get is one of these bucket seats for a go-kart or a drift cart so you've got some side to side support and you don't fall off. But actually it's going to take a bit of practice to learn driving this thing. It's quite a weird vehicle to drive being omnidirectional. But it does seem to be quite powerful and more than strong enough. That's not the end of the project though. I'm going to be adding a seat to it, but I'm looking for suggestions from the audience of what other features and accessories I could add to it. What about a cannon like on Colin Furze's screw tank? Also, next week I'm hopefully at EMF camp with it, so there'll be some more testing footage coming up in my vlog of that event, which comes up next week.